The greatest commandment is about loving God and uh, this includes loving Him with all our minds also where mind is the seat of all thoughts and heart and soul control emotions. Adam and Eve succumbed to the forces of darkness and that which was separated by God from the light of His glory entered the human soul to exert control. All believers, though being sinful by nature, are blessed with the indwelling Holy Spirit through faith in Lord Jesus, but the darkness also remains within. The fight between the two to control the thoughts and emotions of man becomes evident in our daily lives, the only difference being that the darkness tends to force its way on man, while the light of God only guides and desires man to seek his help. Let's begin with the word of God. The scripture reading we have taken from the... Uh... Second uh, Epistles to Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 3 onwards. Here it is written, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity, to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do you look at things according to the outward appearance? This is the word of God. Receive it as such. With the indwelling Holy Spirit as our guide and helper, why should a believer be required to fight a battle to control his thoughts from evil towards good? The answer to this lies in the uh, creation process itself and the fall of man. In Genesis chapter 3 when serpent comes to Eve, the question that he asks, has God said? Actually he is not asking the question, he is giving a suggestion. What he is saying is, even if God has said, why should you bother? Listen to the what is inside you. Same thing he is asking uh, Lord Jesus also in Matthew 4 verse 6. In, in, when the uh, Lord is being tempted. He says, if you are the Son of God. So he is not, he knows he is the Son of God. That's why the Lord doesn't answer him with that. He is giving a suggestion. You are the Son of God. You are the Creator. Then why are you sitting hungry? Command these stones to turn into bread. And then eat that. Listen to the inner voice of your body. Listen to hunger. The difference between man and animal is only this. Animals, when they were created, they were uh, given with the established boundaries which God had set for them. The boundaries were placed in their heart and they follow that. There is very rarely there is a violation um, of those boundaries in animals. Whereas man is supposed to listen to the external voice. God used to come and meet uh, Adam and Eve every day in the evening. And that is why the scripture was given. Listen to the word. Listen to God's word. So when we listen to God's word, that is when we learn about God and we obey God. So when Eve heard the suggestion of uh, the snake, now she saw everything in a different light. In uh, chapter uh, Genesis chapter 3 verse 6, now she saw the same tree with new idea. The tree she must have seen many a times before. Now she sees the fruit is very good. The tree is pleasing to the eye. The fruit is pleasing to the eye. And it is desirable for eating. Man was supposed to listen to the word. External voice. The moment they started listening to the inner voice, the animal tendencies uh, cropped up. And the violation of God's instructions automatically came in. Darkness which was separated from the light of God, from the glory of God, that entered mankind. So the darkness now prevails in man. The light of God was already there, his glory was there inside man. Darkness also came in. Now the difference between darkness and light is, light does not force anybody to do something. God has given free will to man to follow whatever he chooses, to follow uh, God's word or to follow evil. Where darkness makes evil so attractive that we are tempted towards that. Virtually darkness forces us to obey its commands. That is why the distortion in that 
power equation of creation and destruction that was placed in man because man was created in the image of God, image and likeness of God. So the part to create and destroy was also in it. That equation which was there, that gets distorted. When man starts obeying darkness, power of destruction predominates. And following darkness, then the light becomes dimmed, covered, darkness prevails and the fight automatically continues. When the Holy Spirit comes uh, into every believer on um, having uh, developing faith in, in the Lord, the Holy Spirit again does not force us to obey. Only the, when the Lord says, he will convict you of sin. Conviction is to tell you this is what you are doing is wrong. Therefore, he, God doesn't force us. God the Holy Spirit doesn't force. He is inside us. That is why the force, the two forces, they are leading us into different directions and the fight continues. That is the reason for this. Thought formation is a continuous activity in the mind. What does it really mean to control our thoughts and uh, can we really control, control our thoughts, especially the negative ones? Yes. God created universe for His glory. That is what we have seen in the first question also. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 6 and 7, here it is written, God says, Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, I have called them. Yes, I have made him. He says, my sons and daughters. He created man in his image and likeness. The thought process also was supposed to be as per uh, like gods. God doesn't have evil thoughts. He, he, God is love. So, Evil thoughts only entered when we got into sin and the forces of darkness entered us and the forces of darkness started influencing our subconscious mind. The word which is external was given to us so that we register that word into our subconscious mind and then our thought process would be as per that, that word. But now because the darkness uh, is inside the thought process itself is changed. The, the distortion has occurred there. And if we see Romans 6 verse 16, here it is written, Romans 6 16, Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? Whom do we choose to obey? That is the question. If we choose to obey the forces of darkness, we will get evil thoughts only because we are slaves to that. When we are slave to somebody, we are thinking of that person's ideas only, what that person would be doing. That is a form of idolatry and we are made that as an idol. We follow that, we think about that only. That is why evil thoughts would come. In Exodus chapter 7 verse 1 to, 1 to 3, we find God tells Moses, I have made you like God to Pharaoh. But before Moses is sent to Pharaoh, he is already told, I have hardened the heart of Pharaoh. He will not listen to you. God had already influenced the mind and thought process of Pharaoh, hardened his heart. The moment Moses would go, he won't listen. And thoughts are like birds flying in the air. If we allow the bird to form a nest in the head, that is when they take their domicile in us. We will get evil thoughts, but we counter those thoughts with the word of God. We use the word of God to counter those evil thoughts and naturally then we overcome those thoughts. In Leviticus chapter 9 verse 7, when the tabernacle is being uh, consecrated and uh, Aaron is being uh, consecrated and he is supposed to now go first time into the Holy of Holies. Moses tells Aaron, come near the altar of God. Come near. That means Aaron has been standing afar. Why was Aaron standing afar? Because 
Aaron is thinking he is unworthy to do anything. Unworthy because he is the person who had made that golden calf when Moses was on the uh, mountain getting the Ten Commandments. He considers himself unworthy. All of us sinners, we have been chosen. We, we didn't have anything in us because of which we should have been chosen. God knew our state. He still called us. He still chose us. We are supposed to have dependence on God, not on dependence on the evil of uh, evil forces. David, the man who is uh, labelled as man with God in heart, he had committed sin with Bathsheba. And after that, he writes Psalm 51 in verse 6 and 7. He says, Psalm 51 verse 6, Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden part, you will make me to know wisdom. David is saying, you desire in me holiness. You desire truth in me. And that is why you will help me. He's, then he says, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. David is expressing his dependence on God. Because he knows on his own he cannot control his thoughts. So, then he was, in verse 10 he says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. The word create here is the Hebrew word bara. The bara is the same word which is used in Genesis chapter 1 when God creates everything. So that is what uh, David is saying. Create in me. Help me. And in Matthew 26, verse 39 to 44, Lord Jesus is in the Gethsemane Park. And he prays there three times. Father, if this cup can be removed, but not my will, your will must prevail. He expresses what is there. His thought has come. He places it before the Father. But then he says, I will not succumb to this thought. I will overcome this thought. I will obey your will. And humanity of Lord Jesus is being displayed there. He controls his thought. That is why thought control is possible in when we follow the forces of light. Forces of darkness we follow, we will succumb to that. Who are we slave of? Darkness or light? Whoever we want to follow, that is what will dominate, dominate our thoughts. That is what will control us. That is how we will then follow that process only. How can we bring our thoughts under control and uh, subject to God's commands? Uh, when the forces of darkness entered, like we have already discussed, we are into sinful nature. In sinful nature, we cannot control our thoughts. It's impossible for man. But in Luke 1 verse 37, uh, he says, nothing is impossible with God. God can do anything. So, we surrender to God, our thoughts also, our thought process, everything that we place it before God, surrender to Him, ask His help. In Acts chapter 17, verse 10 to 15, we find Paul and Silas had gone to Beria. And in verse 11, it is written, the Berians were more noble than the Thessalonians. They were fair-minded than those in Thessalonia. Why were they fair-minded? In that, they received the word with readiness, with all readiness. Paul preached, they received everything with all readiness. Scripture being preached, uh, being preached, they were very happy, listened to it, received it. Now after that, what they did? and search the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Every day they search the scriptures for truth. Paul is a known scholar. That time everybody knew that he is a scholar of the Old Testament. What he is preaching is right. But still the Barians did not believe Paul also. They searched the scriptures every day for the truth of it. And only then, in verse 12, therefore Many of them believed and also not a few of the Greeks, prominent women as well as men. Only after that, when they had heard, received eagerly, then they assessed, analyzed. 
anything that we hear every day we hear lots of things if we do not analyze and find out the truth about the things that are being told us all that will go into our subconscious mind and affect our thought process everything that we hear on the television on the on the computers on on our messages that we get in num and number of messages being sent all over and many are false but this is what is happening fake news is a major issue these days and the uh, cambridge analytica the way they uh, influence the, uh, it is supposed to have they have alleged to have influenced the elections in america by analyzing the thought process of people that is why like the variants we must think assess only then believe in two corinthians uh, chapter 11 verse 13 and 14 2 Corinthians 11 verse 13 and 14 here it is written for such a false apostles who are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into apostles of Christ they are deceitful but they are calling themselves the apostles of Christ and no wonder for satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light that's what paul is telling them Satan also transforms himself presents himself as angel of light he presents himself as equal to lord jesus so we are supposed to follow barian's example listen assess only then believe then in 2 corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 and 3 to 5 he says for though we walk in the flesh we do not war according to the walk in the flesh we do not war according to the flesh our war is with the power that is through the divine power the power that we are receiving is from god through the holy spirit this power is sufficient to demolish strongholds that are established in us strongholds of forces of darkness so we can demolish all these but what are these weapons first weapon is prayer prayer is the thing it is the communication with with god it is communicating with god placing our requests knowing god placing our thoughts desires everything before god and then seeking his help seeking his uh, like uh, david is saying in uh, psalm 51 create in me a new heart asking him for all that then next is faith faith in the lord faith in the scripture faith in the truth of the scripture that what is written here this will happen and he will do it then prayer and faith gives us hope hope that what he has promised will come into being but i have asked it we will receive it that is then happen then this hope transforms our life we start loving god we start loving our neighbors god's word and his holy spirit then start transforming us into the image of god into the image of son son of god lord jesus was also tempted in the wilderness and satan quoted the scripture to him lord jesus countered every time with the word of god and certain parts he totally ignored lord in lord jesus was asked if you are the son of god he didn't answer that he didn't even touch upon it He says, "You don't have to tell me that I'm the Son of God. I am the Son of God. I don't have to tell you. No confirmation to be given. So ignores all that. So how can we answer the uh, the distorted uh, words of the Scripture by false apostles and others? How do we do it? If we learn the Scripture daily, read the Scripture, learn that. When we start learning that, only then we can counter temptations." only then we can counter the evil thoughts when the forces of darkness try and dominate us then we say no the word of god says this this is what i am supposed to do this is what i am supposed to be that is how we counter then faith is developed faith in this that he is always with us lord says i am with you to the ends of the age always with us and when and if we have sinned then we repent and start afresh david says create in me a new heart 
Psalm 51. He seeks God's help. He said, perch me and cleanse me with high soap and I'll be made, made new. Then the next is what Lord is telling Peter in Luke chapter 22, verse 31 and 32. Lord Jesus tells Peter just before Gethsemane Park, Peter, Satan has asked for you to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith does not fail. I have prayed for you. When we find any believer in our church or a friend or anybody pouring prayer to temptation, we pray to the Lord, help him, help that his faith does not uh, fail. Like the Lord, like our Lord, he prayed, so we also pray, so that uh, we help that uh, believer. Then we are given defensive uh, weapons. The offensive, those weapons are to uh, overcome pride. I am very proud, arrogant. So I ask to pray for me, ask my friends to pray for me. And you are listening, pray for me. Then the defensive weapons are in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18. The strength is, our defensive strength is in the Lord and His Holy Spirit. That is where our power comes in. Holy Spirit empowers us to fight all thoughts, fight all evil, evil forces. Then we are given the armor of God. This armor of God is, helps us in fighting principalities, powers, forces of darkness, spiritual hosts, the, the evil forces that start commanding us. Then we are given this power to control those. And what is this armor? First, a truth is a waste band. We use that as a truth to girdle our waist to stand firm in that, that is to support our spine, that is what gives us the strength. Breastplate of righteousness, all emotions and thoughts are here. Righteousness of that, to, of God to cover this, to control that. Gospel of peace, the word of peace, the Lord's word, that gives us peace in our heart. Shield of faith, shield is to, 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 uh, to ward off the weapons fired by the uh, evil forces. Faith is the shield. Helmet of salvation. Helmet is covering our head, most vulnerable part. Then, salvation that is available to us through the Lord. Then that is our helmet. And sword to attack is the Holy Spirit. It's a double-edged, two-edged sword. We use that. And that is the most powerful weapon. And through prayer and watchfulness, we persevere. We pray and we are watchful like the variants. Listen, analyze, assess to the truth. We are watchful what is being told to us. And then in truth we persevere. We persevere in our fight and we then emerge victorious. That is the only way to control our thoughts and fight the principalities and powers that are trying to control us. Is it really possible to uh, control our thoughts as Apostle Paul has said? When Paul says and writes in the scripture, as per scripture, everything that is written in this book is true. It is totally true. It is God breathed. God breathed means this is a living word. When Paul could do it, so can we. When we were uh, coming for the uh, shoot today in the afternoon, you only insisted, the temperature here is very high, 36, 37 degrees. You insisted, no, we will go out. I was saying we can shoot it at home. That is the difference between overcoming our thought and falling prey to that. Scripture says, love God and love one another. Once we follow these two commands, it automatically ends jealousies and pride goes. We are loving others. We are trying to build that person up. We don't uh, step over somebody and push somebody down and break ourselves up. We, we are putting up, uh, everybody we are building up. Uh, Apostle Peter's uh, epistle, first chapter, uh, first uh, book and uh, fourth chapter, ninth, tenth verse. He said, be hospitable to one another without grumbling. 
as each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God, building up one another, helping each other in controlling the thoughts, humbly managing everything. No complaints, neither bringing on somebody, but nor building ourselves up. Everybody being taken together. That is what was there in the uh, in the first church, as uh, mentioned in the uh, book of Acts, the first three, four, uh, five chapters, and even beyond the whole book of Acts. Revelation chapter two and three contains seven letters written to seven churches by the Lord. End of every letter, there is a specific sentence. He says, "He who overcomes." That means the Lord wants people will overcome. That means He knows they will overcome. He doesn't mean only one person. Everybody will overcome. Everybody can overcome. And the final blessing, if we see uh, uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. As I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. The greatest blessing that can be given. Sharing the throne with the Lord. He knows all believers are, are can overcome and he expects all of us to be victorious. He has given us the victory on the cross. He also suffered the same thoughts in the Gethsemane Park and other places. But he said, not my will, your will. That is what we are supposed to do. Not my will, your will, O oh Lord. And the victory is then ours to claim and live according to that. We live this by developing a close relationship with God through daily worship and prayer. Reading the scripture every day, meditating on it like the Barians did. Hear, assess, analyze and then believe. And then through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the power of the Lord, overcome all powers and principalities. Demolish their strongholds. Demolish the thoughts that are evil, that are trying to control us. And then we control our thoughts and we become victorious. And then we can, when we go before the Lord, we can claim that uh, blessing that He has promised. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit who is in us to empower us, guide us, and lead us. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the scripture and through the Holy Script, Holy, Holy Spirit, making the scripture come alive in us to give us the blessings to control our thoughts as per the scriptures. Lord, bless us. When we stumble, help us to get up. When we uh, seek you, be found, help us, Lord. And Lord, when we uh, seek forgiveness, forgive us and create in us a new heart. And Lord, bless each and every one of us. Bless us so that the forces of evil, the forces of darkness cannot reach us. Even their voice cannot reach us, Lord. Help us to demolish their strongholds. Help us to overcome these evil thoughts and help us to focus our thoughts on you only, Lord. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory and we thank you for listening to our prayer and accepting it. For we ask and receive all these blessings as per your promises in the word and in the name of our Savior and your beloved Son, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We hope and pray to God that He has blessed you through this message. You may watch our other programs on YouTube and you can also read the detailed notes on the blog on our website. And uh, please do send uh, your questions and prayer requests. You can also support us through your prayers. Until next time, stay blessed. Salam.